G'day, welcome to the second episode of the case study series. And today we'll be looking at the Junkers 87 Stuka. Here we have the resin upgrade from Ares. And as you can see, I've pre-painted it already and I'm giving it a nice deep wash. You can actually see that I'm, I'm going quite heavy with the amount that I'm putting on. And then when I'm removing it, I'm also going quite heavy with the thinner, really laying, laying it on, letting it uh, soak in. So this is done without a varnish um, because I want it to actually bite into the paintwork um, and for it to actually have that really uh, war-torn, long service life kind of a look to it. Um, so again, you can see that I'm just building up the layers uh, and each time going a bit darker. So you start off with the really light layers and then the kind of like your, your pastel, your, your dusty browns uh, and then finally ending up with the, the blacks or the, the really dark tones. And then we move on to chipping. So here I've, I've decided just to go with a, a solid lead pencil. This is available from the art stores um, and it's just a matter of, of essentially scratching and, and drawing on, on the various highlights and edges of, of the model. And now we're moving on to the floor. So once again, we're starting off with the, the browns um, and just basically smothering the, the whole, all the surfaces, making sure they get a good coat. Again, no varnish has been applied prior to this because I, I really do want it to bite in. Building up the layers, one on top of the other. I'm not actually cleaning them up until this point, until I've got about two layers. Uh, and then once I've cleaned it up a little bit, just ma made sure that it's not overdone in any one place. Again, just building it up, adding a few more dust tones. With a bit of thinner, just loosening it up again and spreading it out nicely. Going with a now with a darker brown, making it look really kind of dirty and worn and, and the feet have really made a lot of impact over the years. And then once again, once all the dark browns have been put down, we go with our lead pencil like we did previously and just adding a lot of scuff marks to the floor, making sure that that nice raised detail with the rivets and, and some of those um, metal belts holding it have been given good attention. And as you can see, here's the final outcome. And here's just a quick sequence of how to actually install the resin into the, the side fuselage halves. It's never really a proper fit. Um, often, and in this particular case, I've actually had to shave back both the resin and the plastic by a few millimeters just to make the fit actually work because otherwise it was just, it wasn't closing up properly. Uh, make sure you clamp it as you glue it. One of the more recent features that has merged in the modeling industry has been the use of fabric seat belts and other upgrades as well. These are really good. So they're, I think they're made of microfiber and they're very flexible. So, and they're also have very nicely printed detail on them. As you can see here, they've got the stitching on the actual belts. Uh, very easy to maneuver, very easy to weave. As you can see, I've had to weave a bit of a thatch here. Um, make sure when you glue it that it, it stays down, uh, stays glued down, uh, and make sure that you just take a bit of care uh, with each piece um, and putting it in the appropriate distance from the other, the other ones. And then here comes the fun part. So as some of you may have actually experienced in the past with photo etch seat belts, they can actually be quite difficult to maneuver and to put all the various belt buckles in. The bending of the photo etch is really problematic, especially the, the pre-printed color ones, because often what can happen is if you bend it too much and repeatedly, you can actually peel off the printed layer, which essentially just destroys the seatbelt and makes it completely useless. Unless, of course, you've only peeled it off a little bit, then you might be able to glue that little bit back on 
Um, I have salvaged a few like that in the past, but it is uh, a bit touch and go. And once you get a bit more experienced, you, you know that you can't bend them too far and you kind of learn a bit of the tolerances involved through um, basically uh, trial and error, essentially. But here, as you can see with the, the actual fabric versions, it's an absolute delight. The only difficulty is the actual buckle part itself, but that's just a matter of um, just bending it, trying to get it into the holes and, and the kind of normal, easy kind of trial and error stuff without actually risking damaging any of the parts or getting frustrated too much, um, as can happen with the actual photo etch versions. Um, so I'm using super glue to glue all of this into place. And as you can see, it's actually come out really nice. And I'm, I'm really impressed with a lot of the, the fabric seatbelt um, products that are out there at the moment. And again, you can see the stitching on this. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Some elements of the, the color photo edge can look a little bit better. Um, again, it's personal preference, but I think for the, for the effort and for the ease of, of putting everything together, I will be going with fabric as much as I can in the future. And as you can see here, the final install is again using um, super glue, and we're just making sure that we've initially anchored the seat belts to to the bottom where we want it, and then we actually can wrap it around the other side and glue it down, um, as you can see here. And once again, the other big seat belts on, on the actual main chair is very similar. You just put a little bit of the, the glue on either the part or the chair itself. Um, just be aware that as it moves and you, you're not quite getting it where you want it to go, that glue will spread around. So you really want to kind of have the belt fall down onto the, the chair exactly or at least near, near enough to where you want it to go because otherwise you can smudge the glue. You can just touch it up a bit with paint later, but it, it is noticeable. So once everything's in place, you can see here that the weathering process begins. I'm doing it straight onto the actual microfiber fabric, as well as the seat, so there's no varnish involved here at all. Um, the benefit with this is the actual ink washes, and these are acrylic ink washes, they will soak into the microfiber. And so obviously you can't just undo what you've done to the fullest extent so you've got to be careful with the colors you choose and where you place it that you don't want to basically be in that position where you want to undo something so the process is just building it up just adding more adding more because again as you add you can you can come to a point where you go yep that's good enough but it's very difficult to walk your way backwards from that if you go okay i've overdone this with Photo Edge, that's probably a lot easier to do. So I guess that's one of the benefits of Photo Edge is you can actually wipe things off almost back to a reset. Whereas with these fabrics, you really can't. So just just be aware that unless of course you varnish, then that's a different, different matter um, because the varnish will protect it. But then you don't get that really kind of stained look that I'm looking for here. Again, I, I want it to be in keeping with the rest of the, the cockpit interior. So I actually do want it to be quite heavily weathered. That's all for this episode of Scale Model Cinema. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again in the future. Check out other videos at scalemodelcinema.com. Cheers.